In this presentation, we will cover the bidirectional immunization module in version 251. The information we provide will be generic in nature. For state-specific questions, user manuals will be available on our website at sticomputer.com. Immunization registries help providers and families by consolidating immunization information into one reliable source. Many registries are moving away from the sending of a flat file or paper to real-time 251-HL7 bidirectional messaging. Two registries in particular, Delaware or Delvax and Pennsylvania or PA Sys, now have this capability. Bidirectional means that we can share information back and forth. Your system will send vaccine data automatically for each registered patient and the registry will reply with patient history and or possible error messages. The setup we're covering in this video is the same for both states. However, each state has a formal enrollment process and testing stage. Both Pennsylvania and Delaware offer a lifetime vaccine registry. Therefore, any office providing immunizations is expected to send their data no matter what the patient's age. Aside from state requirements, submitting immunization data is also a meaningful use requirement. If you are attesting to stage 1 in 2014 or beyond, submitting at least a test file to your state registry is required if opting to meet menu measure number 8. If you are attesting to stage 2 in 2014 or beyond, submitting ongoing immunization data to your state registry is required for core measure number 16. If you are in stage 1 and you have already sent a test file and received confirmation of that test file for the current year, then you have completed the requirements for the measure. Please make sure to save a copy of your test file receipt from the state for proof of submission if ever audited in the future. If you are in stage two and you are currently enrolled and sending immunization data on an ongoing basis to your registry, then you have completed the requirements for the measure. If you are not enrolled in your state's registry and or have not completed the requirements for each measure, it is important to start the process as soon as possible. If you are in the process of enrolling, remember to save all communication received from the registry in case you need supporting documentation for an audit. Copies of emails and screenshots of your state's process of uploading data to their website are great examples of proof of submission. But before you can even get to this point, you first need to enroll in the registry, so now let's talk about that process. Each state registry will have its own enrollment process. Once enrollment is complete, your office will be assigned credentials by the state registry. For Delaware, you will receive one facility ID per location. For Pennsylvania, you will receive one facility ID per location and a username and password. To start the enrollment process, go to our website, sticomputer.com, and click the Enrollments link at the top. Then scroll down to the Immunization Registry Enrollment section and find the instructions for your state. The main document for each state will have a link to the enrollment form or additional instructions on where to go to complete enrollment. After enrollment is complete and you have your credentials, you can then complete setup with Chartmaker Medical Suite. For written instructions on how to do so, please reference our user manuals on sticomputer.com by logging in and then navigating to STI University and then Help Documents. After enrollment is complete, you can then configure your facility ID and login information that you received from the registry. This can be done in either Practice Manager or Clinical. In Clinical, you would go to Chart, Registries, Immunization, Configuration. In Practice Manager, you would go to Administration, Registries, Immunization, Configuration. Then click the Registry Format dropdown to select your registry. If you do not see your registry listed, please contact Software Support and somebody will activate it for you. Then click the lookup icon to select your office location. The list you see here is the list of facilities that you set up through Practice Manager. 
highlight the appropriate facility and click OK. Then you will enter your site ID. Site IDs are assigned by the state registry, so if you are not aware of your site ID, please call your registry rep, not STI. Enter your site ID and click Add. If your practice has multiple locations, follow those steps again for each location. Then select your default location by clicking the applicable box. This step is still required even if you only have one location. If by chance you forget to select the facility when entering an immunization record, the default site ID designated here will be used when sending data to the registry. The bi-directional credentials are then set up at the bottom of this dialog. For Delaware, this area will be grayed out as Delvax uses our vendor credentials. For Pennsylvania, enter your user ID and password assigned by PA Sys. If your office has multiple practices but only one assigned user ID and password, then you should have an entry for each practice in this dialog using the same user ID and password for each one. To add your bi-directional credentials, click the lookup icon to select your practice. Then select the practice and click OK. Then enter your user ID and password and click Add. Repeat those steps for any additional practices. And finally, the Instructions for Sending section. The first checkbox sets the registry environment. Select the Production radio button if you have been approved to submit data to the state's production server. Select Test if you are in the process of submitting test information to the state's registry. Both Delvax and PA Sys require you to start out in test mode. The last checkbox would be used if your office does not want to send immunization data prior to a certain date. This would be used in a situation where your practice decides not to send legacy immunization data because it may have been entered using the old 2.3 requirements, but instead you decide to only send data entered after upgrading to the version that supports the 2.51 interface. If this is the case, you would check the box next to Do not send immunizations with a service date prior to, and then select the date that you upgraded. When you are done configuring the necessary fields, click Save. The next option is the ability to configure the user's first, middle, and last name. This feature was added because the registries are requiring the full name for the person administering the vaccination, and prior to version 5.2, you were only able to designate a username, which did not distinguish between first, middle, and last. Users can be modified in either the Practice Manager Administration tool or through Clinical. We'll look at modifying a user through Clinical. To do so, go to Edit, System Tables, Users. Highlight the user you would like to modify and click Properties. From within the User Maintenance dialog, you will see three new fields for name. If this user was created prior to 5.2, their full name or previous username will be in the last name field. You should modify this appropriately. Middle initial is not required. If you do not have the user's first and last name configured in the proper fields, you will receive errors from your state's registry and will need to resubmit information after correcting it. Click OK once you are done making changes and close to close the user's dialog. Now let's go back to Practice Manager and talk about a step that needs to be taken to eliminate duplicate immunization records from being sent to the registry. The steps I'm about to go over are only necessary if you are entering immunizations through clinical. If you only enter immunizations through Practice Manager, this step is not required. 
We are assuming at this point most practices are entering immunization through clinical, which is why I'm emphasizing this step. So to eliminate the duplicate records, go to add-ins, clinical, immunizations, procedures. The selected procedures section on the right should have a list of all the immunization procedures you enter through practice manager only. If you document administering an immunization through clinical, then it should not be on this list. To remove the procedures that you document through clinical, highlight the procedure and click remove. You can either select one at a time or use the select all button if you are removing everything. You will most likely be removing all procedures from this screen if you are completing all progress notes electronically through clinical as there shouldn't be a need to manually enter them anymore. Click save when you are done. Next, we'll talk about Medicare Q codes and how they relate to this process. Q codes are required for Medicare billing, but are not accepted by your state registry. A procedure override will need to be added to all your applicable immunization procedures so you can continue to bill Medicare the appropriate CPT4 code for payment and still have the vaccine records sent to your registry. To set this up, go to Administration, Transaction Tables, Procedure. Enter the IH code for the procedure you are looking for and hit Tab on your keyboard. Then click Billing Codes to the right. Click New. Then click the Billing Form dropdown and select the applicable Medicare P5 program for your state from this list. To the right in the Override Data section, enter the applicable Q code in the Billing Code field. Then click Add to List. You would then repeat those steps for any additional Medicare programs you bill to, including paper. When you are done modifying all your Medicare programs for this procedure, click Close. And Save. You would then repeat those steps for any additional immunization procedures that you may bill to Medicare. Again, the purpose of this process is to ensure you are not sending unacceptable data to the registry while maintaining the ability to bill Q codes to Medicare. A great feature you may not be aware of is the ability to preset manufacturer and lot numbers for each CPT code that you administer. This is not a requirement for setup, however, it will make data entry easier. To do so, go to Administration, Transaction Tables, and Procedure. Enter the procedure you would like to modify, then click Immunization to the right. Here you will enter information for each lot you administer for this vaccination. This will save you time when entering patient-specific immunization data later. To do so, click New and enter the required information about that lot, including expiration date. Then click Add to List. If you have multiple lots and or manufacturers, click New again and enter your information. When you are done, click Close. Remember to click Save at the bottom of this procedure code before searching for your next code. And then repeat those steps for any additional codes before clicking Cancel. Next up is Patient Consent. We have made changes to how you will document the patient's consent when submitting data in the 2.5.1 format. Instead of doing so on the procedure dialog while you're documenting the immunization through your progress note, it is now done in the patient's account. Documenting consent information can be done in either practice manager or clinical. 
I'll demo it through Practice Manager, but keep in mind it's located on the ID tab of the patient's chart in Clinical as well. So within Practice Manager, open the patient's account on the Patient tab. Then from the right, click the Consent button. This dialog allows you to configure consent information for multiple areas throughout the software. The Immunization section at the bottom is the one that we will discuss. Your first step will be to select the Registry Name drop-down to select which registry you are configuring the consent for. If for any reason you do not want this patient's information to be sent to the registry that you just selected from the drop-down, click the checkbox for Do Not Send Patients Immunizations to this registry. Then click the lookup icon to select the registry status. This is the status for the patient at the state registry. Typically this is going to be active. Highlight the applicable status and click OK. Next, click the lookup icon for Reminder Preference. The Reminder Preference is how the registry will notify the patient that an immunization is due. Some of the registries only accept certain codes, so please reference your state's user manual to obtain a list of valid codes for your state. Select the preference for this patient and click OK. If this patient does not want their data shared with other practitioners, select the Yes radio button for Protect Immunization Data from Other Clinicians. If this is set to Yes, the registry will load the data but will not share it with other offices. Your last step would then be to select the effective date for the four fields we just talked about. When selected, these fields will default to the current date, so as long as today's date is fine, then you are done. Click OK and then save on the patient's account. Remember, configuring the consent is a one-time step that you will do for each patient that you administer vaccinations to in the 251 format. Offices still sending data in any previous formats will still need to document patient consent through the order procedure dialog in a clinical chart note for each vaccination. Now let's switch gears and discuss the changes that were made to the Immunization Entry Dialog in Clinical. So within Clinical, we'll open a chart note, and then select the Immunization Procedure from within a Procedure Checklist. The exact information necessary to be documented for your state registry will be outlined in our state-specific user guides. The first section related to immunizations is the Manufacturers and Lot Numbers for this procedure section. This section will allow you to pick from a list of pre-populated lot numbers for this immunization to aid in speeding up the data entry process. The options you see in this section will have been entered by your staff through Practice Manager under Administration, Transaction Tables, Procedures. Once you are in the Procedures dialog, you would click Immunization, and this is where you would pre-populate this data. If you are administering an immunization from one of these pre-populated lots, click the applicable line and you will see the Manufacturer, Lot, and Expiration display in the appropriate fields below. If you need to modify that information for any reason, or if you accidentally clicked on it and you didn't mean to, you will still have the ability to change this information. If you need to modify the manufacturer, click the lookup icon to search for it. If you need to modify the lot number, simply type the new lot number over the old one. And same goes for the lot expiration. If you need to modify it, you can either click in the field and type the new value, or click the drop-down and select from the calendar. VFC eligibility should be entered if you participate in the Vaccine for Children program within your state registry. If you need to document this, click the lookup icon and select the applicable code. Typically, you will be selecting one of the V codes. 
The disease immunity checkbox would be selected if this patient cannot receive this vaccination because they have already been exposed to the disease. Please remember that if you use this option, you should also be selecting the procedure not performed checkbox along with your corresponding reason as well. Select the historical checkbox if you are not administering this immunization today, but rather are just entering it for historical purposes. If you do so, also select the source of the information. The source will always default to source unspecified. However, if you would like to modify that, click the lookup icon, remove the defaulted text, and select the applicable option. To the right, you would then enter dose, route, and site information. These fields used to be free text fields. However, they have since been changed to structured data fields, meaning that for route and site specifically, you will need to enter an applicable code or click the lookup icon to find the applicable code. You can no longer just type anything in these fields. So you would then go ahead and type the value in the dose field. If it is not MLs, click the lookup icon to pick a different unit. Then enter the code for root or click the lookup icon. Select the appropriate option and click OK. Then do the same thing for site. Site is no longer required by the registries but can still be entered. The administered by field will default to the user that originally selected this procedure in the note. So if that was the doctor, but you as the nurse or MA are the one administering this vaccination, click the lookup icon to select your name instead. The facility field will default to the facility that was selected for this note, which is done at the top of the chart. If no facility is selected in the chart note, like we are seeing here, the default facility set up during the configuration process will be sent to the registry. Then we have the section on immunization consent. This section is used to document information about the person consenting to receive this immunization, whether they are an adult or a minor. If by law you are required to document that information, you can do so here. The only field that will not be applicable to users sending data in the 251 format is the permission to share checkbox. This checkbox was addressed through the consent button located in the patient tab in practice manager or the ID tab in clinical and does not need to be selected here as well. The option for permission to share is located on this dialog for users that are still sending data in the 231 format. You will document the consent for immunization, consent date, relationship, and relations name as needed. The consenter's name will be pulled from the responsible party field in Practice Manager. However, you will not see it output in this dialog. If you are unsure whether this patient has a responsible party on file, or if you would like to document someone other than the responsible party, you can manually type that person's first and last name in here instead. The last thing you will need to document prior to saving this information is the vaccination information statement or VIS date associated with the informational sheet you gave to the patient. To do so, click the checkbox next to the immunization name and then click the appropriate date from the dropdown. So that's it. When you are done entering your immunization information, click OK. Now let's discuss registering an individual patient with their state registry. This process checks to see if immunization records already exist from other providers. Once the patient is registered, the registry will link the patient to your office site ID. Name and date of birth are the minimum patient information required to register a patient. You may register patients in either Practice Manager or Clinical. In Clinical, you will find the option under the Chart menu at the top of the screen. In Practice Manager, you will go to Administration, Registries, Immunization, Register Patient.
Select your registry from the applicable dropdown. Then select your patient by entering their account number or clicking the lookup icon and searching for them. You will then see their current registration status to the right. If they are not already registered, click Submit. A query is sent to the registry to see if the patient exists. The registry will return a list of possible patient matches if found. If no patient matches are found, no matches found will be displayed, the status will change to registration pending, and the date it was sent will be documented. It is possible that your patient may not already be in the system and therefore no matches will be found. This is okay since once a vaccine is sent for that patient, the registry will create the patient in their database and then clinical will recognize the patient as registered. If patient matches are found, the registry will return a list of similar patient names that have already been registered, like we are seeing here. Select the checkbox for the correct patient and click OK. Once you select OK, a record is sent to the registry confirming that this is the correct patient and any existing immunization records in clinical will be sent to the registry. Additionally, if there are any immunization records existing at the registry level, they will be available for download into your system. Please note, if the user selects the wrong patient by mistake, the only way to correct it is to call the registry. Once the practice and patient are linked at the registry level, manual intervention at the registry to fix this is required. The Submission Status screen will display the patient's status at the registry level as well as the Immunization Submission Status. This can be accessed in both programs as well. In Clinical, you would access this option under the Chart menu. In Practice Manager, go to Administration, Registries, Immunization, Submission Status. The filter options will default to all, but will allow you to pick criteria to narrow your search by if so desired. For instance, if you only wanted to see successful data sent to the registry, you could select successful from the status dropdown. If you only send data to one of the bidirectional registries, then it is probably a good idea to at least filter by that so that you are not receiving extra columns of data below. Once you change your filter options, the screen will automatically refresh, showing you the results at the bottom. To view the submission status for an individual patient, select the patient through the account field. If you select an account that is not registered with the selected registry, a message will display asking if you would like to register the patient now. If you select Yes, the system will take you to the Register Patient dialog immediately. The bottom half of this dialog will display any of the patient's immunization records with an indication as to whether it was sent to the registry and the option to edit or resubmit. If you click Edit, the Immunization Entry dialog will appear, allowing you to modify previously entered information. If you edit an immunization record, you should then click Resubmit to send the modifications to the registry. Please keep in mind that you will only have the Edit option available for immunizations entered through Practice Manager. If the immunization record was entered through Clinical, you will only have the option to view the record through Practice Manager, like we are seeing here with Hep A. If you need to modify this record, you must do so through Clinical. When you are done with this dialog, click Close to exit. Beyond having the ability to view immunization records that your practice sent to the registry, you will also have the ability to view records the registry has on file for an individual patient. To download and view the registry's records for a given patient, open the View Registry Records dialog. This can be accessed in both programs. In Practice Manager, go to Administration, Registries, Immunization, View Registry Records. Select the appropriate registry from the drop-down, then search for your patient. 
then click Download. If there are records to download, they will then display in the bottom half of the screen. The Registry Records section on the left will display a line item for each date that you downloaded information from this registry. The Record Details section will display the immunizations on file at the registry for a selected date along with the immunization details. If you would like a copy of the highlighted record for your patient or to scan it into their electronic chart, highlight the record from the left and then click Print at the bottom. If you would like to delete a downloaded batch, highlight the batch and click Delete. Clicking Delete will not delete immunization data at the registry level or in your database. It is simply deleting the history of the download. It may be helpful to delete older downloads to keep this dialog more manageable. However, it is not a required step. When you are done viewing the registry records, click Close. The last item to show you is a report in Practice Manager. This report will list patients who are not registered with your state registry, but have immunization records waiting to be sent. This report can only be accessed in Practice Manager, not Clinical. To access the report, go to the Reports tab. Then go to the Clinical sub-tab. Click the plus sign next to Clinical Immunizations. Then highlight Unregistered Patients. If you would like to view the default report, click Preview at this time. If you do not want to view old vaccines, you may want to configure your report to only show unregistered patients after a certain date. Do this by clicking the Select Criteria tab and then adding in the field name of service date with an operation set to greater than or equal to and then the value set to your date. Click Add. If you think you might want to run this report regularly, save the configuration by clicking the Edit button at the bottom and then naming your report. Otherwise, click Preview to view the report. Your report will look similar to this. It will show you, by registry, any patient that has immunization records in clinical but is not enrolled with a registry. To print the report, click the printer icon at the top of the dialog. To save a copy to your computer, click the Export icon. Click the red X in the upper right-hand corner to close the report preview. So let's recap. The first thing you want to make sure you do is to be on the latest version of Chartmaker Medical Suite. If you are unsure how to do this, you can call support. Then you want to make sure you have completed all training necessary and obtained a copy of any user guides that might be applicable. After that, you should be ready to make the one-time database changes we discussed in this course. They include update each staff member's username, add your facility ID or IDs to the vaccine registry configuration, walk through the steps of removing the immunization procedures that are entered through clinical in practice manager configuration so that duplicate records are not sent to the registry, and finally, add the procedure override information to the Medicare Q codes if you bill for these. Then, on an ongoing basis, remember to document the patient's consent through the Consent button in Practice Manager on the Patient tab or in Clinical under the ID tab. If you are already sending data to your registry in Format 2.3, please contact your registry representative to see if you need to re-enroll prior to sending 251 data. We know for sure that in certain instances, like with NJIIS, you do need to re-enroll first. That concludes our presentation on the bidirectional immunization module in version 251. If you have any questions regarding the information contained in this video, please contact customer support at 1-800-487-9135.